Hey friends, welcome to my YouTube channel, MBC Lifestyles Diary. My name is Marie, I live in New York, and I love to entertain, I love fashion, I love cultural events, and I'm asking you to join me in this adventure. Today we're at Flushing Meadows Corona Park. This is a huge park located in Northern Queens. In the 1920s, it was so far from the development in the city that they used to use it to bury ash. It was kind of a dumping ground. But Robert Moses, in the 1920s, made it part of his parks project to develop a large piece of land into a park on the Flushing River. So this park has a long history. In 1939, it was part of the first World Fair and then again in 1964. We have remnants of the World's Fair, uh, as indicated by this structure over here, which at some point in time in the 70s was also used as a skating rink. And we also have the beautiful terrace on the park. A lot of weddings and events are held here, and it's still beautiful. It's still a breathtaking view. Flushing Meadows Park is 897 acres. And actually, a lot of people that fly into New York for the first time see bits of this park at one part of their journey from JFK into the city. Please take this walk with me to my favorite parts of, the, of Flushing Meadows. It's a huge park. I'm not gonna cover it all in this video, but I'll give you some highlights and some things that might look familiar to you. When my children were younger, this was my favorite part of the park. I'd come here, I'd bring them to the zoo. There's a wonderful petting zoo in the spring and summer. There's the carousel. Um, it's just a wonderful open safe space for them to run and be free. Um, also further down, you'll see the iconic Unisphere as also a favorite in movies to indicate that you're in New York and it's a remnant from the 1964 World's Fair. And it's unfortunate that this park has not been maintained as it should be, but in the 2000s, they tried to start remedying this. So they opened an aquatic center, the National Museum, um, National Space Museum is here. They also um, redid the tennis courts, and that's where the U.S. Opens are held. There was the famous Shea Stadium, which housed the Mets. That was demolished and in its place they built City Center or City Place. And um, there's boats that you could ride on the lakes. There's the bicycle carriages for a family of four. This park is really well used by the community. So this dinosaur that we see here at the zoo in Flushing Meadows seems to be part of an exhibit that's going on citywide where they put these animated dinosaurs in front of the city zoos. So it's by the Brooklyn Zoo, it's by Central Park Zoo, and there are several at the Bronx Zoo. So this is how our city is blessed, is that each borough has a full park and their own zoo, and they're all worth visiting and interesting in their own way. We tried twice to catch this dinosaur moving, missed it each time. I hope we get a third try. So 
this is the free petting zoo for the children. It's really a lot of fun. There's uh, sheep and goats, um, donkeys. It's very fascinating for the kids. There's feed so they could feed them. And it's right next to the little amusement park with the little roller coasters and bumper cars and carousel. It's really magical for the kids and a lot of fun for the parents. On the other side is the zoo and there's an admission fee. So if you participate in the parks program where you can buy a package that admits you into all the zoos across the city, it's a great deal. So they're still doing timed entry for the zoo. The zoo's open daily from 10 to 4.30. And the adult price is $9.95, children's $6.95, seniors $7.95. So with all the modern technology, you scan it for your one day ticket. So here's a map of the park. Okay, and as I showed you before, this is the petting zoo. And we walked across to enter the, the main zoo. This is all that you can see as you walk along, but my favorite part is the Avery. I like this uh, Avery. I think it's one of the best in the city and highly underrated. So I'm going to take you to my favorite part. I think it's great that they have bird feed. So you could throw that in and not uh, have to worry about uh, hurting the animals. It's like a big house cat. Canada Lynx. So here are two of my favorite things in Flushing Meadows. Across the way is the Hall of Science and you have uh, replicas of the rockets that were sent out to the moon and into space. They discuss aviation. It's really interesting and a lot of field, New York field tr uh, um, school trips are held here. And then my favorite part of this zoo is the Avery. Um, just with the sculpture, the structure alone, um, it's interesting and beautiful. To me. So this gives you a history of the dome and it's a geodesic dome and it was originally the Winston Churchill Pavilion at the 1964 World's Fair. This 175 foot wide dome, an original display, took only a week to erect. It is one of the largest single layer structures of its time. Geodesic domes were originally designed by Buckminster Fuller, famous architect and designer. The domes were hailed as being one of the lightest, strongest, and most cost-effective structures. And it's nice that they use it now for the Avery. So this has two levels so that you can see the birds that like to be in the bush and the birds that like to be in the tree. 
It's a gentle slope upwards. I like that this is bright and airy. The one in Central Park really tries to create the rainforest because those are the types of birds that are on display. Here you can look for flight patterns because sometimes you can tell what kind of bird it is by the way it flies. And in this dome structure, they have room for that. There's the sweeping, the flight pattern of songbirds. There's the rises and falls, which are parrots, woodpeckers, and quail. The type of songbirds are the common and grackle, northern cardinal, American robin, gray catbird, and the white-throated sparrow. There are small parrots that are called monk parakeet and sun canure. Then there's the large parrot, which is the blue and gold macaw, the green-winged macaw, scarlet macaw, and the blue-fronted Amazon parrot. All here in this Avery. The monk parakeet is also called the Quaker parakeets. The legend has it that these natives of Argentina were introduced to Brooklyn when a shipping crate full of birds broke open at John F. Kennedy Airport. Here we're heading towards the highest point of the Avery. So here we're at the peak of the dome. So you're at the level of the treetops. And as you can see, you see some of the birds nesting and you get to see their flight patterns as they swoop down. The other beautiful thing is as spring and summer comes and the trees bloom and are lush, you really feel like you're in a forest. And the twists and turns is a revelation. But it's nice to be here too because you get a clear sight of the birds. You see them building their nests in the trees. You see them flying about and you hear their song. So the white bird that we were looking at is an egret. We have the babbling brook below us. It was a wonderland for my children and it was a wonderland for me, especially living in New York City. With high rises and sky rises and cement plazas, this was a beautiful sanctuary of green and nature.
At this level, we're looking at ducks, cinnamon teal, northern pintail, green-winged teal, and the birds of call are robin, crackle, and catbird. There's such a thing as dabblers. They're light enough to just jump into flight. And the diving ducks run along the surface to get up enough power to lift their heavy bodies. So we have the northern shoveler, the mallard, wood duck, green wing teal. As the dabblers and the divers are the hooded mergensons, lesser scalp, redhead, common golden eye, ring neck duck, canvas back, Argentinian rudy duck, North American rudy duck. Cattle egret, these birds originally flew from Africa all the way to the Americas on their own in the wild. They follow cattle to catch insects stirred up during grazing. California sea lions. They come from uh, California coast all the way down to British Columbia. There, this is a male and female, and you can tell the male because it has a large uh, domed head, and the female is smoother and smaller. Unfortunately for sea lions, they are a great source of food for the great white shark. And here we have the Sea Lion Store and Cafe. Souvenirs for the kids and some delicious coffee for you. This is a fantastic park for families, small children, people in wheelchairs or disabilities because it's flat and level. The winding paths take you into different little alcoves where the animals are exhibited. And as I said, the Avery is my favorite. It's not overwhelming and there's something for everyone to see. Please come enjoy this jewel at Flushing Meadows Park. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share.